Bourbon Blue Ribbon Buckboard Bacon. Today we're going to be making buckboard bacon. This is going to be a lot different than your standard pork belly bacon because today we're going to be using a pork shoulder. Buckboard bacon uses the same process as standard bacon but it uses a different cut. The process is going to be slightly different as well because of the type of meat and the size of meat that we're using. For buckboard bacon we want to use a pork butt or a pork shoulder and we want to have that boneless. I got very lucky at our butcher, he already had a tied boneless pork shoulder in the case, so I just grabbed that one, saved myself a lot of trouble. The curing process for standard bacon and buckboard bacon are very similar. The difference being is obviously the cut of meat here is much larger than pork belly. So with this, we're going to need to do some injections. When we inject the brine into the roast, it's going to help us really penetrate the meat with all those flavors and to help us avoid any food safety issues. We're going to be using our Northwoods Meat Cure and Brine Mix, specifically our maple blend. This product has salt, sugars, maple flavors already in it, as well as the sodium nitrite or pink salt. So all you have to do is read the chart on the back for the size of meat that you have and make your brine. Our roast is just over seven pounds. So according to the chart, we're gonna use a cup and a half of our brine mix and one gallon of water. For a little added boost of flavor, I'm gonna add half a cup of bourbon as well. I think that flavor is gonna go really well with the maple for our final product. And I'm just gonna put that right in with the brine so that all those bourbon flavors absorb into the meat right with those sugars and salts. Next, we're gonna start injecting our brine into our meat. I have our marinade injector, and what we're looking for with a roast like this is we're hoping that it's gonna take on about 20% of this brine internally for injection. So if I can get 24, 25 ounces of this into the roast and then have the rest sitting in the brine bag, we should be in good shape. Go in, start pushing as we pull the needle out. I would only go about halfway into the roast. Once we're done with the top here, we are going to flip this over and inject from the other side as well. Next, I'm going to get our roast into a brine bag, and I'm going to pour the remaining brine in there, and we're going to set it in the fridge for 10 days. If you don't inject, I would suggest about a 14-day cure time for a roast this size. We want that extra time so that our brine can penetrate the meat and cure it well. And here is where we have a main difference between pork belly bacon and buckboard bacon. Ours is going to take 10 days, whereas a pork belly bacon is going to only take about 7 days to cure. And again, the reason we're only going for 10 days is because we did do some injections of our brine as well. The size of the meat being the main factor here. In you go. All right, we got a clean pan here. We'll set our roast in just in case our brine bag does break, but these are pretty hefty. Now you'll see the roast start to float just a little bit. That's fine. That's one of the reasons why we're going to do the rotation in the fridge every day. Seal it up about 90% and then give it a hug to get that air out. We're going to go into the fridge and we'll see you in 10 days. What we have to do now is we have to get it out of the brine, give it a good rinse, and then we need to set it in the fridge for about 24 hours so that it can dry out and form the pellicle. Now the pellicle is something that's going to form on the outside of our buckboard bacon, and that's really gonna help with smoke and flavor absorption. And now we're gonna use some paper towel and we're gonna get this as dry as we possibly can. Now that I have our pork nice and dry, I've put it on a rack lined sheet tray and this is going to go into the fridge for about 24 to 36 hours. And tomorrow we'll be ready to smoke. 
All right, our buckboard has been in the fridge for about 36 hours at this point. We're gonna use a little bit of topical rub in the form of our blue ribbon competition rub. This is really nice sweet rub that's gonna pair really well with the smoke flavors and the bourbon flavors that we've already put into this buckboard bacon. So we don't need to go crazy because with that brine there was a bunch of flavor that we infused in here already. So we'll just get a good covering. I have our smoker outside preheated to 200 degrees and I've got our sawdust dampened. The reason you want to get your sawdust wet is so it doesn't burn up so quickly. It's going to be a slower burn which means it's going to produce more smoke which is just more flavor going into our buckboard bacon. Again I have our smoker preheated to 200 degrees outside so we're going to put this directly on the smoking racks and we're going to bring it up to a temperature of 150 degrees. After a night of cooling in the fridge, our buckboard bacon is ready to fry up and to taste. It smoked for about six and a half hours until it came to an internal temperature of 150 degrees, at which point I pulled it, I let it sit at room temperature for about half an hour, and then I put it in the fridge overnight to cool down. Now that it's fully cooled, we were able to slice it, and we're gonna throw it on the flat top and finally get to try it. All right, I'm gonna take off the end just so I have a flat edge to start cutting. And I'm gonna save this, set it aside, because I'll dice this up, and then you can just use it like a, almost like a pancetta. Well, I think this looks absolutely perfect. You got really nice, even coloration. Got a decent smoke ring on here. And you'll notice that the fat content is a little less than a traditional pork belly bacon, but that's kind of the point. It's just a different flavor, texture that we're gonna be looking for here. Get a nice, sharp knife so we can get some thin slices. You can also thick cut this if you want, depending on how you like your bacon. Now with this buckboard bacon, I'm gonna use it exactly the same way as I would a traditional bacon. I'm gonna put it on sandwiches, I'm gonna serve it up with some eggs in the morning. You can chop it up and use it in pasta dishes. It's gonna have a lot of those same flavor profiles, it's just a different cut of meat. Nothing left to do but try it. It's salty and sweet just like bacon. It, it, the crunch is just like bacon. The fat content is there, gives that flavor. One of my favorite parts is that bourbon that we put in there in the brine. It really comes through nicely. And then there's just a hint of sweet on the outside with that blue ribbon rub that we put on there just before we went into the smoker. And on top of all of it, we got a really nice, well-rounded smoke flavor that was given to us by our PK100. Overall, it's hard to rate bacon lower than a 10 out of 10, so that's what I'm going to give this. For this recipe and more, including all of the products that you've seen in this video, please head to psseasoning.com. Also, don't forget to click subscribe. And until next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.